Chios, 100 miles south of Lesbos and just a few kilometers from the Turkish mainland. It's Wednesday the 27th of April and 66 refugees have been found drifting in this rubber boat. They've been brought to land by a border patrol. All the wars in your car, Jenny. On the dockside is Kanwa Singh, a volunteer from Slough, leading a team from the British charity Khalsa Aid. These people, they're not moving by choice. I would probably do the same if my country was getting bombed. If, like, you know, if Slough was like Aleppo, I'd want to get out. That's them on the, they'd happily go back if they had the same stuff that we have at home. We want safety, we want job opportunities, we want to be able to look after our families. They want the same thing. Bassam, is that one to fives? A key member of the volunteer team is Bassam. A Syrian refugee himself, he acts as translator. Among this latest group of arrivals, they find a young Syrian boy. He appears to be travelling on his own. Is, is he by himself? Yeah. He's travelling by himself? By himself. Who did he get? How did he get here? Like his cousin of his father, like some family member. But his, where is his mother and father? Being killed in ISIS, 11 years old. Name in Syria? In Halab? Yeah, he's from Aleppo. You okay, Hassan? The volunteers make the Greek police and the other welfare workers aware, but after waiting all day, the boy stays with the family he's travelled with, and later they're all taken to the island's detention centre. Since December, over 150 youngsters who are travelling alone have ended up at this children's refuge on the island, called the Ark of the World. Yesterday in your lesson, what did you learn? For another volunteer, Louis, it's time for the morning's English language name? lesson. So we started with, I am... For most, it's the first time they've been in a classroom in years. What is your favourite thing? These children are the lucky ones. It's estimated there are over 90,000 lone child refugees now in Europe. 10,000 are said to have disappeared. We were asked not to identify the children here, but they wanted to tell their stories. How did you get to Kios? Kios So they just walk from Iraq to Turkey, crossing the borders with some smuggler over in Iraq to escape to Turkey. This 16-year-old Yazidi boy and his two young sisters managed to escape from an ISIS-controlled area of Iraq. They became separated from their parents during the trek across Turkey. Can you tell us uh, why did you have to leave your homeland? So ISIS, they start to, to force them either to convert to Muslim mm. or you're being killed. Mm. They decide to go. It's better than to be killed because they hear everyone, even they did to convert to Muslim. I mean, even they, they keep killing. Doesn't matter. One Syrian boy told a horrific story of fleeing across the border into Turkey. When he arrived in, in the border, the police Turkey, they killed seven people. Oh, the guys that he's traveling with? Yeah, they killed them, they shoot them. And he's one of the people who, who was safer to enter. And the rest, there is seven being killed. H how old is he again? 17. Man, that's a lot for 17 year old. Yeah. Seeing all that and traveling all that way by yourself. The Turkish government says it has an open door policy to refugees and allegations of killings by their guards on the Syrian border are baseless. The other boy, an Afghan teenager, said he was terrified that if he'd stayed at home, he'd have been killed or recruited by the Taliban. Back home in England, everyone thinks um, Afghanistan is fine and, and it's safe. Afghanistan is not safe because um, the Taliban and Daesh, they ask the, especially the teenagers to join with them. And also last week there was an explosion in Kabul city. Uh, 64 persons were killed and more than 100 were injured. And maybe if I were there, maybe I will also killed by that, that is explosion. Afghanistan is not, is not safe. But the Ark of the World is now full. 
The UK has agreed to accept up to 3,000 unaccompanied children from Europe over the next four years. Many of those here could be eligible, but the process is unlikely to begin before Christmas. Most Greek refugee facilities are also now full, but people are still arriving on a daily basis. It means there are increasing numbers of unaccompanied children in these camps. It's hard to overstate the risk to their welfare. And those who arrived after the March deadline will not be allowed to come to Britain. Suda camp in the centre of Chios town. British volunteers working with the Greek charity Praxis and the UNHCR have prioritised 37 lone children for special food deliveries. Can you can tell all the kids the Praxis list to go that side? Everyone okay. on the Praxis list uh, okay. this side. Nima Abdullah Salah. It's an overcrowded place where the atmosphere can change suddenly. Just a day earlier, the food handout was interrupted by a demonstration against deportation. You can get tense here for volunteers. Like one minute we're serving food, next minute just like decide to stage a protest. You can't blame them either because they've been stuck here for like two months, not knowing if they're going to be deported back or going to Athens. We don't have an answer for them. We don't get told by the authorities. They take all the frustrations out on us. That can get really tense for us. And there are large numbers of families with young children here. When fighters took over his home, Mahmoud fled from Syria with his wife and four small daughters. A medical condition means he's blind in one eye. If he doesn't get an operation in the next few weeks, he'll lose his sight completely. Mahmoud, how, how's your eyes now? It's still the same, nothing changed. We risked our lives and the lives of our daughters on the sea to get here. We've been told my husband needs a specialist operation in Athens, only we're not allowed to leave the island. My daddy is the one who teaches us to read and helps with our homework. I'm so sad and upset. If he goes blind, I don't know what I'll do. I want my daddy to be able to see me. Can someone help us, please? Can we just leave it? Before the deal in March, refugees were allowed to move freely onto the mainland and then to other European countries. Now, unless they have a life-threatening condition, they have to stay on the islands. It's more than just frustrating because you, you just can't do anything. There's so many people in this camp that need like, urgent medical attention and they shouldn't be here. They shouldn't be in camps like this.